It is a gorgeous night in downtown Tampa, Florida, but the threat of rain is looming over Raymond James Stadium. It's hosted Super Bowls, college playoff national championships, and tonight, the superstars of Stadium Championship Series 1 come to town, all trying to get the overall event championship. We are on the road to World Finals, and automatic berth is on the line. This is Stadium Championship Series 1, and this is Monster Jam. Welcome to Monster Jam. I'm your host, Scott Jordan. Once again, joined by Great Clips Mohawk Warrior driver Bryce Kenny and our pit reporter, Leslie Mears. And tonight, Monster Jam comes home to Tampa as we rejoin Stadium Championship Series 1 on what's become the most competitive series out there. It is the tightest points race. Six points separate our top five athletes. And at the top of that leaderboard is Justin Sipes and Megalodon, who comes over from the Triple Threat Series, now doing very well in stadiums. Well, an uncharacteristically slow start for Ryan Anderson as well, but he's a world finals champion for a reason. And he's not going to just sit back and let someone else take this championship. And so well, I'm excited to see what Ryan has in store. 17 world finals champions are represented here. Let's meet the superstars of Stadium Championship Series 1. Camden Murphy, Itasca, Illinois, Bakugan Dragonwood. Justin Sipes, Flaherty, Kentucky, Megalodon. Cynthia Gauthier, Quebec, Canada, Monsima Dalmatian Ice. Tom Mentz, Paxton, Illinois, Max D. Fire. Don Creighton, Tonganoxie, Kansas, Scarlet Bandit. John Gordon, Hiram, Georgia, Bag Company. Brian Wright, Grandy, North Carolina, Hooked. Steve Sims, Virginia Beach, Virginia, Stone Crusher. Ryan Anderson, Kill Devil Hills, North Carolina, Son of a Digger. Morgan Kane, Currituck, North Carolina, Grave Digger. Jim Kohler, Michigan, Avenger. Brad Allen, Columbus, Michigan, El Toro Loco. Jimmy Creighton, Tonganoxie, Kansas, Bounty Hunter. Shane England, Paris, Texas, the Big Kahuna. Stackfield here ready to compete in three competitions. 14 points goes to the winner, and every competition is crucial to trying to get that overall event championship. For more, let's go down to Leslie Mears with our point standings. The points race is really starting to heat up here on Stadium Championship Series 1 going into week three with Justin Sipes holding a narrow lead over the field. Currently, though, there's a three-way tie for second place among Jimmy Creighton, Tom Mentz, and Camden Murphy. But practice proved detrimental to other teams with a melee of breakage, rear steer pumps, drive shafts, solenoids, starters, and also a tuning issue on Megalodon. Did Justin Sipes get it figured out so he can hang on to that lead tonight? We'll see. So much on the line tonight for these athletes. Let's take a look at our America's Best Contacts and Eyeglasses racing semifinals. It'll be Scarlet Bandit and Stone Crusher and Gravedigger going up against Bakugan Dragonoid. Well, that Gravedigger versus Bakugan Dragonoid, Morgan Kane versus Candy Murphy is turning into a little bit of a rivalry, so I'm going to be excited for that. But Steve Sims is someone that really has a little bit of a chip on his shoulder to some degree in the back, really the past couple of events that I've seen him run in. Um, he hasn't been as smooth on the throttle, but he gets an early jump on Don Creek. It's their first meeting of the year. Gets that nice jump off the starting line. Takes a smooth turn. Steve Sims and Stone Crusher trying to get to the finals. There's Don Creighton getting that turn. And Steve Sims a small advantage thus far as he pushes the throttle across the finish line. And it is Steve Sims and Stone Crusher moving on to our racing finals with an 18.985. Well, that was a really fast pass for Stone Crusher. But Scarlet Band, you can see it was a little bit of a choppy throttle around that first turn. And then carried a little bit too much speed into the final. Final turn, which, which ended up sending her a little bit deeper than Steve Sims. Camden Murphy, Bakugan, Dragonoid, already with a racing win this year. Up against Morgan Kane and Grave Digger, a former World Finals racing champion. Camden Murphy 3-0 against Morgan Kane thus far this year. Looks like Grave Digger out to an advantage at that first straightaway. Well, that's a huge advantage right off the bat. And coming across this first turn, they're all of a sudden neck and neck, it looks to me. And it comes down to that, how much speed you're going to take into that final turn. And getting across the finish line, Cannon Murphy with a big lead. 
and gets it a little sideways, but he is going to get across that finish line. That's a big upset for Morgan Kane. And he's going to make it 4-0. and oh. He's got Morgan Kane's number thus far this year. Take a look at the replay. Morgan Kane off a little sideways. Looked like he had him. And then Camden Murphy going to accelerate around that turn. Well, both of them have really, really smooth throttle rhythms going around that track. And you notice Morgan Kane probably carried a little bit more speed into the final turn, which allowed Kane and Murphy to uh, take the overall win. And we're going to see Stone Crusher and Steve Sims making it to the America's Best Contact and Eyeglasses Racing Final against Camden Murphy, Bakugan, and Dragonoid. You don't see Steve Sims in a lot of these racing finals. Camden Murphy is accustomed to being there when it's all said and done. Well, he has been really fast so far this season, and all the competitors know it. And so if there's anyone that probably brings the most butterflies out of the competition, it's probably going to be Camden Murphy. So Steve Sims has got to feel a little bit of pressure right now. Their only matchup this year, Camden Murphy defeated Steve Sims, and they are pretty even there through that straightaway. And around that turn they go, this is where Camden Murphy is so good. Well, one of the interesting things about his driving style, too, is Camden Murphy gets the truck back on the dirt sooner, so he's able to accelerate a little bit faster than his competitors. But that is a lightning fast turn, and Steve Sims has to push it a little bit too hard to try to keep up. It's just not quite enough. Steve Sims and Stone Crusher having issues with the turns here. Now, Bryce, at what point do you know you're behind in a race? You really Really don't know if you're ahead or behind until you come across that final turn car in that final turn and Steve Sims knew it's why he pushed it a little bit too hard. For Camden Murphy, Bakugan dragging out his second win of the year. Let's go down to our racing winner. Well Camden Murphy doing what you need to do out here, making laps, getting yourself those 14 points and taking it back to that first week one win in Anaheim. It's a repeat tonight. Yeah, it feels great, that's for sure. You know, we had so many great competitors on this tour. I didn't even expect to get out of the next round with Justin Sipes, even with Morgan Kane. So making the final round is something in itself. But hey, you know, we came out on top of the end. Awesome for you and your team. So how are you going to keep this momentum going forward here for the rest of the night to try to leave here with the points lead? Well, honestly, one of the biggest things is the last thing he said to me before that green light went in the racing. It's stay cool, calm, and collected. Don't make any mistakes and do what you do best. So my man Fitchett right here is always in my ear. Keep me ready to rock and roll. But we're always here for our Monster Jam fans. We're going to put on a great show. Cool, calm, and collected for Camden Murphy. It is all coming together for him in the 2019 season. He gets 14 points, the first 14 of the night. A triple threat series driver athlete coming over and having a great year in Stadium Championship Series 1. One competition is in the books, two more still to come. Up next, it's a Great Clips Two Wheel Skills Challenge. Who will hold up the trophy at the end of the night? We're gonna find out from Tampa. This portion of Monster Jam is brought to you by America's Best Contacts and Eyeglasses. It's not just a better deal, it's America's Best. We are back from Raymond James Stadium, the Stadium Championship Series 1, and it's the Great Clips Two Wheel Skills Challenge, and we're right down the road from Orlando, the home of Monster Jam World Finals 20, and for the first time ever, a Two Wheel Skills Challenge competition champion will be crowned. It's really exciting for all of us drivers as well. Any chance to hold up a trophy, we want to have it. But Jimmy Creek and Bounty Hunter, this is a truck that has a lot of horsepower and a low center of gravity. And so it's pretty easy for him to get a really nice slap wheelie and ride it all the way across the floor just like he just did. Jimmy Creighton, a former World Finals champion, won it in freestyle. A chance to do it again in the Great Clips Two Wheel Skills Challenge. He is slowly pulling up to the freestyle pad, possibly a popper or a stoppy here. Well, it looks like it's got a really nice transition, so it should uh, be pretty easy in terms of getting the back of the truck up. He grabs the brake really nicely. But it almost sounded like he missed reverse, and that can happen because it's not all the time easy to shift these big Monster Jam machines. But a 7.638, I think it's a pretty good start to the competition. Yeah, there's a slap wheelie from Jimmy Creighton. Great start to the competition. Brian Wright in hooks going over the cars. Gets up on the back two wheels, doesn't keep it up, but a nice first hit for Brian Wright and Hooked. Well, anytime you can go and hit one of the crush cars right off the bat, the fans are going to love it. They start to see a little bit of carnage, and anytime you can enter that into the Great Clips two-wheel skill challenge, that's a, that's a major plus for these fans. But one of the things that I've really enjoyed getting to watch Brian do is, is his level of boldness as some of these attempts and some of these tricks that he's wanted to try continue to increase. And Brian Wright being very methodical here. We've seen that strategy before. A lot of these athletes will go out and know what they're going to do. Some just kind of take it by the wheel. It looks like he's preparing for a nose wheelie or a stoppy. He gets it up on the nose, moves it back and forth. Great elevation and great control for Brian Wright in Hooked. 
Well, he got a lot of nice air coming off of those crush cars, but a 7.948 is an excellent score for Brian Wright, and I'm looking for big things out of him coming up. Don Creighton, Scarlet Bandit with a little sky wheelie on the freestyle pad for 5.704. Steve Sims, Stone Crusher, trying the same thing, doesn't get the air he wants. Shane England with that brand new big kahuna body, 3.791. John Gordon, Bad Company gets a bicycle off the cars, can't hold on to it for long. And here is Tom Mintz and Max D. We've seen this before. He gets those back two tires up on the backflip container and tries to hit that maximum moonwalk. Can he get it up on the nose and tries to back it up on top of the container, gets the two wheels caught. And here's Camden Murphy, Bakugan Dragonoid, tries to slap it down, doesn't get what he's looking for in the Great Clips Two Wheel Skills Challenge. Well, Jim Kohler is no stranger to a good sky, Willie, and he's lining up here for that single log hit. And uh, gets some good air right off the bat, and he can't quite get it vertical enough to be able to walk across that. But Jim Kohler in that Avenger body, he just understands how to get a truck vertical and put on that good show. Jim Kohler, two-time World Finals champion. Again, this year, crowning seven world champions, so he has a chance to do something he hasn't done before with the sky, Willie, lands it on the pad and gets back down. Still going. A little bit of a slap, Willie up to the backflip container. So Jim Kohler gets a nice hit there. And we're gonna watch that. Here he goes with that sky wheelie, lands it safely on the back two tires, and then heads on back down. Well, Brad Allen here in El Toro Loco, he's lining up for the same obstacle, but instead of a wheelie, he's actually putting the front of the nose of the truck up on top, trying to get a popper, but can't quite get enough of a hit, enough momentum to get it all the way vertical up on the nose. When you miss your first hit, you have two in this competition, how do you recover as a driver knowing you have to do something spectacular to get any points on your second run? Well, it is frustrating because you have to bring that wow moment, and so you have a tendency to, if you're not careful, to maybe even overdrive on the second one, but Brad Allen is calm, cool, and collected on this nose wheelie. Perfect throttle control there as well. And at this point, he's keeping some nice RPM up on the truck. And at that point, he's controlling it off of the brake. And there's the smoke from El Toro Loco. Brad Allen comes down the ramp, gets up on the nose, and just keeps it there for an 8.746. Here's your BKT Top 5 of the Great Clips Two Wheel Skills Challenge. Your new leader, Brad Allen, El Toro Loco, a great score. Justin Sipes and Megalodon right now sits at that cut line in between the eighth and ninth position for the Great Clips Two Wheel Skills Challenge. The top eight compete at World Finals and look at the nose wheelie into a moonwalk for Megalodon. So Justin Sipes has to continue to get great scores if he's gonna compete for the World Championship. Well, his throttle control is really unmatched when it comes to tricks like this and he's been doing this across arenas everywhere in the United States and he's been very successful but tries to get a nice bicycle gets it on the sidewalls of those BKT tires and a really cool save that's a wow moment the fans were waiting for a 9.420 and that is your new score to beat for Justin Sipes in Megalodon now Cynthia Gauthier Monster Mutt Dalmatian with some issues earlier let's go to our America's Best Contacts and Eyeglasses look in who's ready for America's Best Contacts and Eyeglasses look in so Cynthia, that first pass solo was a little rough out there. Take us through what happened as you were trying to cross the finish line. You know what? Uh, racing is really the hardest thing for me, and uh, I've been working on it, but it's it's hard. Tonight I was like, you know what? If I mess up, I'm just going to go all in and hope for the best. And I knew Donna had me, but I was already in the gas, and it went sideways. It's kind of fun anyway. I think the crowd loved it. Krause did love it, didn't win, but a spectacular way to cross the finish line nonetheless. Well, and it's tough as a driver as well because you want to win, but in that situation where you know that you're not going to win that round, you need to lift, save the truck for the next event. Coming up next, more of the Great Clips Two Wheel Skills Challenge from Tampa. Scott Jordan, Bryce, Kenny calling the action for you from Raymond James Stadium. It's Stadium Championship Series 1, and Justin Sipes and Megalodon throwing it down with a 9.420. That is the score to beat with Morgan Kane and Gravedigger up right now. Well, that is so frustrating as a driver to head out and want to put on a great show, and then it starts to rain. But Morgan Kane, look at that onboard footage of him. He's staring up into the sky. He's driving completely off of the feel of that truck at that point. Rides a great slap with it across the floor on a very slick track. And as the rain continues to come down harder, the track is changing, getting muddier. And how does that affect you as a driver in a competition where everything is based off of getting the proper traction on the two wheels? Well, you need a lot of traction to get a bicycle. And Morgan Kane, though, kind of, even though he doesn't get the, the trick he wanted, goes out in style with a really cool donut. And it is frustrating as drivers because we want to do the tricks that we had prepared. But Morgan Kane makes the best of a tough situation. 
Morgan Kane, 8.719. It is time for the science of Monster Jam, fueled by Monster Energy. What's going on, guys? I'm Cody Saussier. This is the science of Monster Jam, fueled by Monster Energy. Steve Carmack's got over 20 years experience building and designing tracks. So, Steve, with the evolution of the Two Wheel Skills Challenge, how has that changed your whole process to make it more user-friendly for our driver athletes? Well, in the past, it's just been the slap wheelies in the arenas and the stadiums and stuff. So they just hit, slap the front end on the, off the ground and just ride a wheelie across the track. Now they're doing what's called the stoppy. So we actually have to steepen the backs of the race lanes and put some other obstacles that are steep. The evolution of the tires, the pipes, in the track to be able to get the truck up on the two wheels to balance it. So what about bicycles? Because we're starting to see those more frequently. What are you doing to try to help those guys get the perfect bicycle? That's actually just all up to the driver. That We don't do anything special to the tracks to design that. Most of them come off the side of the race lane, put two wheels on it, throw the truck on its side and then steer into it and see how far they can ride it. What are you looking for on the ramps to complete that perfect bicycle? So you can do the bicycle off of many different ramps. There's obviously tons of variations out here, but to me, I want to have a ramp that's got a lot of angle to it to be able to pop you up quick and get that big monstrous truck up on the bicycle. So this ramp right here has a lot of nice angle to it, a really nice runway that I can get the speed that I need, get the angle that I need to be able to hit this ramp just right. You got to get it perfectly up on that the very top corner with just the, the front tire that you need. Turn the opposite way that you should in you know, your natural instinct to get it back on all fours. Turn that opposite way, get it to hike up on the bicycle, and then from then, just make sure there's nothing you're going to run into and it's smooth sailing. The bicycle becoming one of Ryan Anderson's go-to moves in this competition, but with weather like this and a track like this, it almost makes it impossible here. Well, it's even difficult to get a slap wheelie, but Ryan Anderson is an expert at it. You can hear him kind of peppering the throttle a little bit. That's keeping control of that Monster Jam truck as much as possible on a really slick, slick track. But because he is so well known for bicycles and all the variations, you know, I'd be curious if he is just going to hit another slap wheelie or he is going to try a bicycle and try to give the fans what they want. Well, that's what is important to Ryan Anderson, giving the fans what they want, and nothing seems to be too impossible for Ryan Anderson. He is lining up for a bicycle off the ramp and gets it almost successful, but nails it down just a little bit. And going into a cyclone, Ryan Anderson, son of a digger, still giving the fans what they want. Well, he's going to be dizzy after that one, but kudos to Ryan for giving it a shot and going out there and trying to do probably the impossible. But if anyone is known for doing the impossible, it's Ryan Anderson and son of a digger. But an 8.855, that's a really good score, but I know he wished he could have come out on top. Not quite good enough to get the lead from Justin Sipes in Megalodon. That 9.420 stands the test of the competition. 14 points going the way to Megalodon. Right now, let's hear from our Great Clips Two Wheel Skills Challenge winner, Justin Sipes in Megalodon. Justin, it seemed like, you know, perfect balance out there. I love how you threw it in reverse real quick to save it on that popper. And then the bicycle, you know, how are you perfecting your two-wheel skills here to take the win this weekend? Well, that's just it. Us, us triple threat guys are coming off triple threat where that's like our favorite thing in triple threat is the two-wheel skills, and we get three hits there. So we've had a lot of practice, a lot of balancing, and, yeah, we're trying to bring it in these stadiums and show some of these old guys a few tricks. So a little more experience for the triple threat athletes getting those three hits. Here's how we stand going into freestyle. Look at the top three, 23 points apiece, and Cam DeMurphy and Brad Allen not far off as well. Well, that's the situation you want as a driver heading into the freestyle competition. If you are one of those top three, you want it to come down to the crowning jewel of Monster Jam, which is the freestyle competition. So I know they're all chomping at the bit to get out there and hit some jumps. Now we talked about the track conditions and the Great Clips Two Wheel Skills Challenge, even more of a factor in Monster Jam Freestyle. For more on the track, let's go down to our pit report brought to you by Super Glue. During the middle of the Two Wheel Skills Challenge, it started to sprinkle just a little bit, but those sprinkles turned into heavy rain for about 30 minutes. While the weather has cleared up now and we've got clear skies ahead for freestyle, the track conditions have really changed out here. You can see lots of deep ruts. It's very muddy and slick, which means that the guys that come out early are going to have to battle all of that mud. Now, there could be an advantage for some of the later guys because as the guys work up the track, it's going to peel off a little of that mud and get down to some dry material. 
Thank you, Leslie. Here are some highlights from Monster Jam Freestyle. Brian Wright in Hooked gonna start us off. Gets on up the freestyle ramp into a bicycle and can't quite hold it. Tried to save it, get it up on the nose. Not successful for Hooked. Well, unfortunately, he's gonna be very frustrated and have a week to think about that early exit out of the freestyle competition. But Shane England and Big Kahuna, you know, this is a, a fairly new truck that he's built and he's been working out a lot of gremlins in it as well. But he fills the clock of 5.412. Not a bad score, but it's not what Shane England is also used to showing those fans. Now Shane England didn't get a chance to practice, showed up late Friday night. Here is Don Creighton and Scarlet Bandit. 6.958, a solid score. Not spectacular, but solid run for Don Creighton. Well, you can see her windshield is covered in mud, and Morgan Kane's gonna have to deal with that as well throughout his 122nd hopeful freestyle run. And so, but this is someone too that when you study the sport of Monster Jam, study Morgan Kane's throttle control, study his ability to shift from first to second. And I'm curious to see if throughout this run overall, just how much throttle he's actually gonna be able to control because that's the real test anytime you come on a slick track like this. And when vision starts becoming an issue with the mud getting on the windshield, how much does that go into deciding what you do on the track? Obviously, if you can't see, you have to play it safe. But we know Morgan Kane doesn't like to do that. Well, you want to get a lot of speed and hit jumps and get some big air. But you got to think, the harder you hit those jumps, the further it's going to send you. And so you have to collect it so you're not going out of control or hitting other trucks or hitting the walls. And so you have to kind of find that happy medium somewhere in the middle. Now, Morgan Kane is somebody that, as he is peppering that throttle going through the air though he's also playing off of the brake a little bit and he's also steering very quickly watch him mid-air he's already pointed in the direction that he wants that truck to to go in and morgan kane up over the freestyle pod gets some air we've seen some donuts from these guys as he gets jammed in the dirt pile there we've seen donuts and that seems to be a go-to trick when the mud starts taking on the track and it gets a little slicker but here he is trying to make something happen your traction's not there trying to get around another donut just cycloning it in and out of the freestyle track and there's a good jump for Morgan Kane and Gravedigger. Well you hear you heard that one two shift that he had right before he hit that jump that's where he got all that wheel speed enough to get some massive air and that's what the fans are excited to see and someone like Morgan Kane and and the, the experience that he has in, in that Gravedigger machine he's the one that's going to pull something like that off. And you can't have too much finesse here but you can give the big air to the fans and that's going to get you the score. Morgan Kane spinning around again going back to that cyclone if it's broke don't try to fix it and look at Morgan Kane round and round he goes getting the fans here on their feet in Tampa well lots of donuts and, and any of the onboard footage that we're watching of Morgan compete in that truck you can see how much work he's putting into making sure that his freestyle run is the best that it can be this is a guy I know has to be winded by the end of 120 second run there's some highlights from the run. You saw the donuts and the cyclones, the jumps he made. Morgan Kane doing everything he can to do a great run with this muddy track. There's the score, 9.389. He is out of the truck, and the fans are letting him hear it. More freestyle on the way. This portion of Monster Jam is brought to you by Great Clips. Great Clips. It's going to be great. This portion of Monster Jam is brought to you by Spin Master Toys. Real trucks, real action, Monster Jam. Welcome back to Tampa, Florida. This is Monster Jam at Raymond James Stadium, the home of the Tampa Bay Buccaneers. And tonight, it's Stadium Championship Series 1. Monster Jam Freestyle is well underway, and so far it is Morgan Kane and Gravedigger with the run of the night and the score to beat. And here is Cynthia Gautier, Monster Mutt Dalmatian, rolled in racing, missed two wheel skills challenge, and now is back to compete in freestyle. Bryce is a driver. When your crew is back there working hard to get your truck back into competition and you miss one, how much pressure is on you? Well, there is a little bit of extra pressure just because you want to make sure you're going out to perform as much for the Monster Jam fans as you are for the crew guys that just busted their tails to make sure that that truck is 100% heading in to the freestyle competition. And Cynthia Gautier is, is really going to have a hard time on a slick track with lining up straight on these jumps. That is the test for all of these drivers. Right there, you kind of see where she, she had half of the tires on one side and the other half on the other ramp, and that upsets the truck. And on a slick track like this, you're going to fight and struggle to make sure that you are lining up straight for all of these jumps. Cynthia Gautier 
Conti is one of the most athletic drivers in Monster Jam. She comes from a pro motocross background, very involved in CrossFit, and she has a freestyle win already this week, this year, one week one in Anaheim. So very capable of putting in great freestyle runs throughout the season. Well, she has really good momentum in this run, and you can notice that the, the jumps are kind of starting to level off a little bit, so it's not getting her the height. And so because she's getting so much speed and momentum, it's actually sending her really far down the track and this, it's getting a little bit harder for her to get the truck turned around to hit another jump. If you're just joining us, Cynthia Gauthier in racing had a phenomenal finish to her run. Didn't win, but the crew has been back working on her truck, trying to get her back into competition for freestyle. She missed the Grey Clips two-wheel skills challenge, so a bit of a deficit for her to climb out of when it comes to overall points. But she is out there doing everything she needs to do for these fans in Tampa, and a great jump for the Monster Mutt Dalmatian Ice. Well, that was some massive air, and as a driver right now, you're trying to find that wow moment. That's the hardest thing to do on a slick track. It looks like she's lining up for the backflip ramp and on a slick track like this, that's a huge gamble. But a perfect rotation just maybe comes down a little bit on the front nose and she saves it. It sits nicely and perfectly for her to sit right there on that tailgate and on that wheelie bar and she's able to bring that back down on all fours. That is a massive backflip on a, on a slick track like this. That's really impressive. She absolutely nailed it. Where does she go from here? Back to the Cyclones. But what a backflip for Cynthia Gautier. Monster Mutt Dalmatian Ice. Not just a backflip, but to get it back up on those two rear tires and keep that control. A beautiful run and she knows it. She knows she nailed it. And the fans here at Raymond James know it too. Well, she had great control throughout this whole run and as much control as you can have was still putting on a really good freestyle run on a slick track but that backflip was awesome that was a really quick rotation on a slick track like this the hardest thing to do is get that rotation when the dirt is so wet and she did a masterful job at it and the celebration happening right now on the truck. Cynthia Gautier, arms pumped in the air with the fans. That 9.498, that is going to be a tough score to beat and a tough act to follow for Jim Kohler in Avenger. Well, if anyone can find huge air on any track, it's this guy. Jim Kohler in Avenger, and he is the master when it comes to making something out of nothing. And right off the bat, some nice air off of that first jump. And he's also had a, a good opportunity to see jumps just like that one. Oh, he catches a bad break, though. He lands on a crush car and pops that front right tire. And it may have a little bit of trouble with the back left tire as well. We'll have to see. But if there's anyone that's comfortable running after damaging the truck, it's Jim Kohler. He understands how to fight through it. And you see that the back left tires completely off the rim at this point. Two flat tires and still moving for Jim Kohler and Avenger Team Scream out of Columbus, Michigan doing on two tires what most people can't do on four and he is still going in that thick mud on two BKT tires. I think Jim Kohler epitomizes what it means to be both a Monster Jam driver and a Monster Jam fan. It's like he knows what the fans are looking for and waiting to see. There's some drivers that would have just parked the truck after two flat tires but not this guy. This is the reason why he's a fan favorite every time he hits the floor. You gotta wonder how much the other two tires can hold up. A donut on two wheels for Jim Kohler and Avenger 8.027. It could have been a lot worse. He could have stopped earlier, but gave the fans every single ounce that he had in that Avenger Monster Jam truck. Well, he got some massive air, but just that unlucky bounce on top of that crush car that took out the front right and the rear left tire. But the fact that that did not slow Jim Kohler and Avenger down still blows my mind. Go from one member of Team Scream to the next, Brad Allen in El Toro Loco trying to follow what Jim Kohler did and keep this show going. El Toro Loco, one of the most popular trucks in all of Monster Jam, and Brad Allen has sat behind the wheel with calm and ease that it takes to be a great, great driver in this sport. Well, you don't have sitting water on the track anymore, but just like that right there, an unlucky bounce where the track is slick enough, he was not able to hit the, the jump square and straight enough and it ended up ruining the rest of his freestyle run, unfortunately. And someone like Brad Allen is so good behind the wheel of that El Toro Loco. I know he's going to be frustrated. You kind of see there, he's, he's got half the, the tires off of the jump and the left one's on top of his ramp, and it's going to put him on his roof every time. Just came off sideways, tried to save it, couldn't make it happen. John Gordon in bad company, another 
A technician turned driver comes from the Grave Digger lineage, now behind the wheel of Bad Company. And the owner of the Bad Company Monster Jam truck lives in the area, so this is a home show for the entire Bad Company team. Well, that jump he had from the get go was huge. That was some massive air, and you could hear the fans get out of their seats. They're excited about that. He's having a little bit of trouble getting around the track. He's also having a little bit of trouble getting the truck lined up on all the jumps straight. But you never know, someone like John Gore in that bad company truck, he may be planning on that. Sometimes you want to get these Monster Jam trucks nice and upset, but I think John Gore's ready to get some bigger air than he's gotten so far. And we talked about vision earlier on a track like this where the mud is flying, but look at the little cutout there in the windshield. Is that something that you would see normally from some of these Monster Jam trucks, or is it just something to help a little bit in the muddy conditions? Well, thankfully, as drivers, we all run a visor on our helmet, so it allows us the opportunity that if we're running on a slick track like this that's getting get the windshield covered in mud, we can kind of cut pieces out of it or do away where, hey, even if the whole windshield's covered in mud, at least we have a little section where we can see perfectly clear and that's what John Gordon chose to do. And John Gordon making the most of his time, gets up over the bus, comes down sideways, still lands it off the freestyle pod, and here he goes back up and down the track. Kind of flirted there with the back flip ramp, gonna stay away from it for now. John Gordon in bad company, trying to get a spectacular run in here to get his score up and get those points. Well, it's still trying to find those jumps that are not rounded off and are still steep enough to give you uh, some bigger air like he started the run off with. You don't wanna have big air to start and then small air the rest of your run. And right now he's kind of running all over the track. He's got some good speed and good momentum. A nice little wheelie there off the back side of that race lane. And uh, But John Gordon has to find some way to get the fans back out of their seats. It looks like John Gordon struggling with some traction. Had to brake before he got to the ramp. Now drifting around the turn. Going for the eight pack backflip. And back on the hood. Couldn't quite land it. Interesting move for John Gordon. Well, it was a huge roll of the dice there to try to get a backflip in wet conditions off of that eight pack but leave it to John Gordon to try something and do what I had mentioned, which was trying to get the fans out of their seats and give them that wow moment they're looking for. It's a tight race for the overall event championship. We are not done yet from Tampa. More Monster Jam Freestyle is on the way. We'll be back after this. We are back with more Monster Jam Freestyle in Tampa, Florida. From Raymond James Stadium, thousands of Monster Jam fans are here cheering on their favorite superstars from Stadium Championship Series 1. We've had some great freestyle runs. Let's look at the BKT Freestyle Top 5. So far, it's Cynthia Gautier, Monster Mutt Dalmatian Ice with a 9.498. I've been excited to watch Steve Sims and Stone Crusher in this freestyle competition because he had such a great performance in racing and he was fast, which means that truck is healthy and it's got a lot of power. And anytime you make that combination come together with freestyle, that's a good night. But a 6.277, I think Steve had a really nice run overall, but the fans weren't quite feeling it. Tom Mintz and Max D hasn't quite had the night we've come to expect. Has had mechanical issues all evening long, but a great jump for the 11-time World Finals champion. Well, it looks like he just had a really tough time keeping the truck together. You see an early breakage on that front end of that Maxi fire machine, a 7.030. Tom Mintz is going to be out for a vengeance next weekend. And here comes former World Finals champion Jimmy Creighton in Bounty Hunter with a great slap wheelie to kick off his run. No stranger to great freestyle runs, has big air, everything you want in a freestyle to get the crowd up on their feet. But something with Jimmy Creighton, and I feel like this is a lost art form, he just likes to go out there in Bounty Hunter and run over things. Well, he loves that. And you can notice that with that lower center of gravity and maybe with the shock setup that he runs, his front end is very, very bouncy, which is great for slap wheelies, but it's hard to get the truck turned around quickly and lined up for the next jump because you're always trying to collect it when that front end is that bouncy and so for some reason Jimmy Creighton wants that bounty hunter truck to land that way it's probably more comfortable for him but on a slick track like this you need as much control as possible I think he's going to struggle a little bit with that out of this truck he's competed in every Monster Jam World Final since 2002 and this year we are right down the road in I-4 in Orlando Jimmy Creighton the easiest way for him to get there with a great donut would be to win this freestyle get the points and win the season championship currently the points lead Justin Sipes and May 
Megalodon Cretan trying to change that right now. You can hear the fans getting out of their seats. They're pumped about that donut as well. And so far, he's had really good momentum. He's been proving me wrong as well about not being able to line up and get turned around quickly because he's had a lot of good speed and a lot of good air so far in this. But my question is, where does he go next? What's he going to do? Can he get bigger air? Can he find some sort of wow moment that these fans are looking for? Solid run so far for Jimmy Creighton and Bounty Hunter. Goes across the ramp sideways and lands it. Nice moment for the Bounty Hunter Monster Jam truck. Trying to find something else to do with the track conditions getting muddier and muddier with every freestyle run. You have those ruts in there. The lanes not quite adding up. So you got to be creative and you got to try to make something happen to wow the fans. Well, I'm curious because it looks like the back left tire isn't quite locking up with the right. And you can see him having a little bit of throttle there and the back end is not moving. It's not under throttle, and so he lines up for the backflip ramp, but it looks like he just bailed on the backflip, and kudos to Jimmy Cree. He's been doing this a long time, and if you're not 100% comfortable hitting that backflip container, don't do it. And Jimmy Creighton put the brakes on at the right time. Again, these conditions very, very tough on these Monster Jam trucks. You see the effort to try and get up the back of the ramp, and Bounty Hunter putting on the brakes. Here's Camden Murphy in Bakugan Dragonoid also coming into tonight. Four points off the lead in that three-way tie for second place in the season standings. Well, the track is still slick, but it's manageable. You can tell that the trucks have a little bit better control in the corners. I like Camden and how he has started out with this freestyle with some nice air. And the fans here, they, they are ready for these drivers to go out there and just bonsai it off of a jump. But you have to remember that for every jump, there's a landing. And you have to be able to collect it on the other end, like we were talking about before, instead of just sliding out of control. And so we'll be interested to kind of see if Camden is able to do that, keep not only just good control, but keeping that good momentum on this track. So far in 2019, freestyle is the only competition that Camden Murphy has yet to win on Stadium Championship Series 1. Would love to change that tonight, and what a push that would be for him to get back on top of his season point standings. This Bakugan Dragonoid Monster Jam truck, the newest in Monster Jam. The kids love it, and I know they're out there collecting those Spin Master toys as we see a little bicycle off the cars in the middle of the track. I like the fact that Camden has been able to line up for a lot of these jumps given the slick conditions. Conditions. It is still slick, but he seems like he's able to get a little bit of better around the track maybe than some other drivers. Maybe he has watched a lot of the trucks go before him and he's seen the, the jumps that probably are going to give him the best air. And then also maybe the parts of the track that may be the slickest. He's one of four former Triple Threat Series athletes on this Stadium Championship Series 1. Three of them are in the top five in the overall standings. And Camden Murphy looks like he's lining up for the backflip ramp. It's going to be tough with the muddy track. He goes up and lands it successfully. Camden Murphy on the muddy track and all lands the backflip in Bakugan Dragonoid. Well, it looks like the truck absorbed it pretty well as he's kind of trying to get around the track right now. It looks like maybe he's just using all of his front steer. It looks like maybe he could have lost rear steer on that landing potentially. And here's a look at some of the jumps for Camden Murphy on this freestyle run. Get some good clean air, some nice extension, and the perfect backflip from Camden Murphy and Bakugan Dragonoid, but not quite enough to get the lead in Monster Jam Freestyle. This portion of Monster Jam is brought to you by America's Best Contacts and Eyeglasses. It's not just a better deal, it's America's Best. That's what it's all about, the Series Championship Trophy, and it comes with a guaranteed ticket to World Finals in Orlando. We are well underway for Monster Jam Freestyle. Here's your BKT Freestyle Top 5. It's been Cynthia Gautier, Monster Mutt Dalmatian Ice with the run of the night, 9.498, two trucks still to come, including Justin Sipes in Megalodon. Well, Justin had that huge win in the Great Clips Two Wheel Skill Challenge, so he's got the confidence and the momentum heading into freestyle because he knows that he's in contention for that overall championship for this event. And he has to leave it all out on the track in order to do that. And Bryce, to tell you how consistent Justin Sipes in Megalodon has been in the 2019 season, he is currently on top of the season point standings without winning an overall event championship as he gets a nice slap wheelie down in Megalodon. Well, you got a great view of the Tampa sky there from that onboard camera. And you can see what the drivers are going through. Anytime the front of the truck is up in the air like that, we're completely driving off of feeling, off of how we believe that that truck feels in that moment to be able to set the front end down when you think it's best. And so he's getting around the track really well. You can tell the track is still a little bit slick and it's preventing him from probably hitting a lot of these jumps square. 
A big adjustment coming over from the Triple Threat Series in freestyle in the arenas. You get the one pad, not many obstacles, and Justin Sipes has a big freestyle win in San Diego already, going for the backflip ramp. And Megalodon, Justin Sipes gets it sideways, tried to save it, and gonna end up on his side, but a great exclamation point for Justin Sipes and Megalodon's run. Well, Justin had a really nice freestyle overall, and you can tell he had the luxury of, of watching a lot of the drivers go before him and seeing what jumps were gonna give him the big air or not, but it really gave him a weird twist on that backflip, unfortunately. And our final driver of the night, Ryan Anderson, son of a digger. Here's a guy who loves to go last. He loves to see the competition, what they're gonna do in front of him. He won world finals that way last year, trying to do it again. Freestyle is son of a digger, Ryan Anderson. We've seen it time and time again. He leaves it all out there and runs that truck until she won't run no more. Well, he's already getting some more air probably than any other driver so far that's been out here. And you can tell he's got a lot of speed, just like we've been talking about on a slick track. So he's kind of rolling the dice there, keeping a lot of good momentum. But notice the throttle rhythm. I talk about it all the time with Ryan Anderson because I believe he's the best in the business at that. These trucks, the way you control them on a slick track like this is through the throttle as much as it is through the steering. And he is somebody that understands when to pepper the throttle, when to give it less throttle, more throttle, when to hit the brakes in midair, and keeping that control on the slick track. And these track conditions don't seem to affect the Anderson boys. They're used to the mud. They learned that from their dad, Dennis Anderson. So Ryan Anderson's strategy shouldn't change as he clears the bus in the middle of the freestyle pad and a good look at the tire cam of Ryan Anderson, son of a digger. Well, Ryan Anderson wrote the book on controlled chaos. So like you said, whether it's a dry track or a wet track, he understands how to get the most out of that son of a digger machine. And he's doing a really good job of that already. One thing you want to notice, just like he's doing, you notice he's turning left midair. He was kind of throwing the truck one way, but he knew that he was going to have to turn that truck and get it whipped around as quickly as possible. He just ran out of real estate there for a second. But if you're studying how to drive one of these machines, notice what Ryan Anderson is doing and the work he's doing in midair and already thinking about the jump that he has to go to next. He's won back-to-back -back World Finals Championships, one in freestyle, one in racing, and he backflip for Son of a Digger, gets it back on the two wheels and saves it. Well, he throws it in the reverse almost immediately as something that Ryan Anderson has become known for after his Monster Jam World Finals Championship last season when he actually threw it into reverse after that backflip last year in Vegas and actually did a moonwalk out of that backflip. But this is a truck that is under the abuse of Ryan Anderson, and he makes sure that everyone in Tampa is going to remember son of a digger after this night. As a shot this year to go back to back to back, there is the backflip for son of a digger. Gets up on the back two tires and lands it. Ryan Anderson, a 9.266 in Monster Jam Freestyle. And here are your freestyle point standings. You see the backflip Monster Mutt Dalmatian Ice. Cynthia Gautier running away with it with a 9.498 her second freestyle win of the year. First since week one in Anaheim. We're going to hear some great work Words from our freestyle winner. Let's go down to Leslie Mears and Cynthia Gautier. Cynthia, you take home the freestyle victory tonight, but it's with a lot of help from your crew as they were able to get your truck back and ready tonight. You know what? We had a bad start from the show. I was kind of disappointed. We need all those show for the Monster Jam World Final in Orlando. So he was working, him and Lacey, so hard. And I was in my truck. I was like, hopefully we can come back. He's like, trust me, we'll go back. And I don't want that truck in one piece. So I gave everything I got. You did out there. And we were so surprised to see you line up for the backflip ramp with the mud. What were you thinking? You know what? I kind of shut my brain up. And my crew guy was like, faster, faster. I was like, ah! I got lost for a moment. I was just so much having fun. I could hear the crowd out there. That was the best moment for sure. Well, congratulations on a huge freestyle victory tonight. Thank you so much. Congratulations to Cynthia Gautier, Monster Mutt Dalmatian Eyes on a big freestyle win tonight. Not going to be enough for the overall event championship. There, your point standings with 36. It's Morgan Kane and Gravedigger slightly edging out Ryan Anderson in Son of a Digger. An incredibly competitive event. Three competitions, three different winners. And in the end, on top of the mountain, it is Morgan Kane in Gravedigger. Let's hear from our overall event champion. Well, Morgan Kane, you take home the overall this weekend, critical points, but more importantly, I think you had a little help tonight taking us overall victory. Oh, definitely. I think the biggest thing throughout the season, you got to be consistent. And if you're consistent and you're just running through, making sure that you're at least in the top three, um, 
and that's my job. But these guys right here, their job is to keep the truck 110%, and they've been doing a great job. My true crew chief, Parker Hatcher, he's out for right now. Should be making the comeback later in the season, but Tim Hall has been stepping up for me. And then we got John Sweeney stepped in this weekend to come help us out. But this amazing first overall of the season, I'm ready to continue on to Indianapolis and keep this run going. Yeah, and you also carry that good luck charm with you too that's helping you out. Yeah, so this is a one year anniversary. My daughter just turned one year old last Thursday. It's it's a good feeling. I mean, being a parent, there's no other, no other love that you can find in this world. And uh, my wife and I are just so proud of our little baby girl, Everly. And this is her beanie when she was in the NICU. Uh, and Carl Van Horn filled in for me here at Tampa. So I always keep this in here with my pocket everywhere I go and every time I get out there and drive Gravedigger. A great night here in Tampa, capped off with Morgan Kane, a Gravedigger, winning his first overall event championship of the season without actually winning a competition. And we've seen that before in this series when Justin Sipes did it in San Diego. Speaking of, Justin Sipes and Megalodon still maintains the overall season lead with the points. Well, these points are getting tighter and harder to come by, so I'm expecting some big moves from a few of these drivers in the near future. You can follow us on social media at Monster Jam for Bryce Kenny and Leslie Mears. I'm Scott Jordan. We'll see you next time on Monster Jam.